This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Thank you all for staying. I know that I've seen this film more than once, and it's very emotional, very hard to watch. So we're going to ease into this conversation gently. And I'm very, very happy to introduce Michelle Husue to you. <laughs> Thank you. Michelle, this is her directing debut, her feature length directing debut. She graduated from Emerson College. Yes. And you studied? Film. Film production. <laughs> and yeah, I think the bachelor's, bachelor's degree was technically media arts, but with, with a concentration in film. Okay. And um, you have done other, many other projects. Correct. Are, are they socially motivated? Are they? Um, I guess, yeah. Um, documentaries, kind of where my heart is at, mm -hmm. and so when before this film, I was just making a living doing a lot of nonprofit mm -hmm. um, film work mm -hmm. with organizations that I believe in. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of happened that way. Yes. Um, I have read many articles. First of all, I just want to say that this is a beautifully constructed film. Thank you. Um, I almost have to go to the structure of it first mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's so profound. Um, you do take an extremely personal experience and you even start with yourself right. and you very carefully orchestrate uh, the universal, you go from the personal to the universal brilliantly, and then you bring it back again, closing with you walking into the sunset, mm -hmm. and a real call for action. Um, it's a beautifully done film, Thank and you. I am very touched, <laughs> as I know everyone else is. I'm going to start with just a few questions, and then I very much, it's a wonderfully intimate crowd, so I hope that all of you feel free to talk to Michelle after I ask a few questions. Um, I have personally read many, many articles and seen lots of news footage about this very horrific crime. And um, I've read them in a variety, like from The Advocate to The Guardian yeah. to Time Magazine mm -hmm. to ABC News and, and 2020. And um, there has been what appears sometimes to be a, a deification or a, myth, a mythology built around Matt Shepard. Um, people have even kind of made him Christ-like. And um, you, on the other hand, really made a commitment to showing him as he was, as a full human. And I think some people felt that portraying him in a fully fleshed out form would detract from his the poignancy and tragedy of his death. Mm -hmm. And I think you felt perhaps the opposite. And I wanted to know if you would talk about that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I definitely did. I was very uncomfortable mm -hmm. with all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and when I think about it, I kind of separated into two ty different types of people. One of them is called Matthew Shepard. Mm -hmm. And the, one I, the person I knew is Matt Shepard. Mm -hmm. um, so while I, I, I fully understand the importance of Matthew Shepard as the face of this movement um, that opened a lot of people's eyes to what was really happening, the inequality and violence that the LGBT community was facing, that's very sacred and, and important. On the other hand, we were just losing Matt's humanity, and I mm -hmm. felt that that was heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, and so my only agenda in making the film was bringing the human, the humanity back to my friend. Um, Giving, that, giving his voice back, sharing the world, sharing his experiences, his struggles with the world, because I thought now, with some distance, that that was equally important, that mm -hmm. people could 
connect to him in this more human, personal way, and that could still be very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, when you speak about the structure, I mean, all of that was, an was very intentional. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make the personal universal and, um, and to share Matt in this, in this new light. For me, you know, I'm not a politician. I'm not, you know, an activist, mm -hmm. um, maybe accidentally, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but when I think about all these social justice issues, these things that we're fighting for, it seems very abstract to me. Mm -hmm. um, when I hear things about hate and inequality and bigotry, I mean, I, I'm like, oh, that sucks. But it doesn't really touch me in my heart. But when it's attached to a human face, when I hear more about the person that it happens to, I'm moved, mm -hmm. I'm touched. So I, want, I wanted to share that experience, mm -hmm. um, give that experience to everyone else. Um, by, I'm blabbing, but you know, if, if people you're could. <laughs> you're not blabbing. <laughs> we thought that if um, people could see the map that we knew, mm -hmm. um, flaws and all, that they could reconnect to him in this way and they could feel the true depth of the tragedy. You know, we didn't lose an icon. We lost someone who was on his way to becoming himself, mm -hmm. who was who lost that lost that opportunity. Yes, and even his mother has said um, he wasn't a saint. He no. was just a young man trying to find his way. Yeah, and that's what you sense in this film. Um, and I think it's really interesting, I don't know about all of you, but when I first heard the story, when I was watching the news footage, I, you know, you never had any sense that this was an extremely worldly young man. You, you, you like the images that this was a person in Wyoming and that it was remote. And here he was extremely well-traveled, spoke German and Italian, um, mm -hmm. lived in Europe, went to school in Switzerland, yeah. um, and traveled extensively. Uh, this is a very, very interesting person. Uh, the irony is that, it, that his death happened in such a remote, right. um, the tragedy. Yeah. All those nuances in his life that didn't really fit in a condensed headline. I know, yes. It was very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, because I've been so moved by this, my friend Natalie Fawcett has asked me to ask you some very specific questions. Um, one is, the name of this film is Matt Shepard is a friend of mine, not was. <laughs> what is the meaning of that title? It's so personal, and I get asked about it a few it's times. It's present tense. Yeah, and it's very intentional. I see the whole title as a mission statement, really. Mm -hmm. You know, it is very, it, it's very much a very obvious reference to my friendship with Matt. Um, but beyond that, it is a mission statement. I hope that when people watch the film and experience a story, they'll feel that Matt could have been a friend of theirs, mm -hmm. too. Um, but beyond that, yes, it, it is in present tense because we still feel the impact of his presence to this day. Mm -hmm. um, his friendship and his death have affected all of us, and he's still in our hearts. And that's what this film is all about, you know? Um, we still love him, we still stand by him and all the other Matt Shepherds out there, um, and we still carry the grief of his loss. Yes. 17 years later. Yeah. Um, I can see that in your eyes, and yeah. I think we're about to both start <laughs> crying. Um, to continue the tear fest, can you explain a little bit about the scene with Father Roger? Sure. Um, it, it's a very difficult scene to watch. I had a lot of feelings mm -hmm. myself, um, some anger watching it. It almost seemed, um, I don't want to say he was making excuses, but I found myself having a very emotional reaction, not a positive one. And when you broke down, um, Will you explain? And it's prominent in the film as well. Yeah. I cut the film with a lot of input from my husband. Um, and a was, who's a producer of the film. Yes, yes, and he's an editor as well. Um, and it was the hardest part of the whole film, um, sitting quietly with all that footage. And in all honesty, I really hid that scene for so very long, just because it was very painful to me. Um, you know, it is profound, but it was incredibly painful and it was very vulnerable. Um, and I still struggle with it a lot, what the things that he was telling me. Um, 
and honestly, in that conversation, you know, I think it's, it was really transformative because it was the first time I was allowed, I allowed myself to be confronted with the idea that the two men who murdered Matt had humanity as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wouldn't let myself think that for so long because it's a hard pill to swallow um, how someone who had a family who was raised in a, you know, in, in a society and a culture like I did or like Matt did, how they could be capable of such violence and such cruelty. I mean, it's, it's terrible to imagine. Um, so when he was trying to get me to, to wrap my brain around that, I was upset, you know? Mm -hmm. Why is that fair? Mm -hmm. how, are, how are they all equal in God's eyes? Mm -hmm. I, still, I still get mad about it, but I think, um, you know, as we progressed through the conversation, he was very inspiring in saying that that's okay, that that anger that I was very ashamed of for over a decade was something to embrace and to honor, you know? Um, and it's okay to not be okay with what happened with Matt. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the beauty of it, mm -hmm. you know, that it's important to stay angry and it's important to get in touch with that outrage and in the hopes that this doesn't happen to another family, another group of friends, you know? Do you think his words prompted you to make the film? Do you think that was almost a call to action for you when he says, don't ever forget it? I think and, so. and perhaps use that grief and that rage to be, to have a productive, positive, outcome or could, yeah, I hate to use those words healing and closure but to yeah. to help the process it definitely gave shape to the way the film ended up you know being and especially mm -hmm. the third act and everything I, mm -hmm. I think that conversation with Father Roger is kind of the heart of the whole film and it really sets up what Judy and Dennis do brilliantly you know um, but it, it was very inspirational and it did give shape to what we, how the film is now and what we continue to do. How we continue to be on the road and sharing it mm -hmm. and sharing Matt's legacy, you know. Yes. Um, just to get a little technical, what did you feel were the challenges, if <laughs> any, between you as his friend and you as a filmmaker? So many, so many challenges. Let's hear what some of them were. Um, just kind of not breaking down in an mm -hmm. interview, mm -hmm. um, trying to keep things moving along, and you know that was just incredibly difficult because all the, most of the people that are on screen who I speak with and I spend a lot of time with each and every one of them I know personally, and a lot of them I'm very fortunate enough to call my friends. Mm -hmm. um, so to be the one drawing these painful memories out um, and having them reopen these wounds, that was, I was very uncomfortable with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, it was just very, it was just very necessary. Um, thankfully, everyone did it with such grace and courage, but, um, you know, it, it didn't come with a lot of pain, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but w it, Without a lot of without pain. Without a lot of yes. pain, mm -hmm. yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. um, Gosh, every you know everything, and it would little moments, uncomfortable, painful moments would just slip in unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. uh, we interviewed Ruan Stacy, who is the CEO of the Poudre Valley Hospital mm -hmm. System. Mm -hmm. um, I interviewed him, and he was really quite lovely. And at the end of it, he said, "I think the room in which Matt passed away is open. You're free to go in there and film." I was not expecting that, uh, so we did, and it was incredibly painful mm -hmm. to go in there, and it just made it all the more real. Um, but you know, I, we all signed up for this. I signed up for it. Um, so I think that's kind of why it took me so long to get up the courage to do this, because mm -hmm. we knew it was going to suck. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is difficult for me to ask you, but um, have you personally been able to move forward in your processing of Matt's death? And you said uh, on your Kickstarter page that you were trying to make sense out of something so senseless. And I know you've had a lot of struggle with this. Yeah. And I'm wondering, uh, you're, it's still very raw, I can see in your face, and, I, and um, yeah. 
I think my answer to that is that I'm more at peace with the fact that it's still a struggle. Um, you know, in our society, there is this philosophy that, you know, as Americans, we can overcome anything, mm -hmm. any tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, that is all possible. You know, we can do it. But some things are so egregious mm -hmm. and so terrible that that closure is not possible. Mm -hmm. So in these years, and especially in these years making this film and seeing the response to it, I've just grown to be at peace with the fact that it's still going to be hard. You know, I'm still going to get upset. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not something to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at today mm -hmm. <laughs> right. with it. Yes. Um, I think the one thing that our film does very well is that it's very, it's not only an honest portrait of Matt and how mm -hmm. I knew him, how we all knew him, but it's a very honest portrait of what true grief looks like. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's powerful, you know, it's profound and it's, it's painful and it's something that ebbs and flows and it doesn't really go away. Um, and you could see it written on everyone's faces right. when, they, when they speak about Matt and the memories of Matt. Um, so that's something I, I'm proud of because it's a very, it's a very elusive thing to describe mm -hmm. the pain of losing someone and what that feels like. But I, I think, unfortunately, we do it justice. <laughs> I, I think you do as well. Um, it's almost unbelievable what Matt Shepard's parents had to go through. I mean, it's almost as bad as what he went through in, his, in the in the scope of his life. Right. Um, when I saw what he had, you know, the rape and the beating in, um, in Morocco, um, it's just the most phenomenal kind of pain to see your child have to, to go through that. And then to have this other um, unbelievable experience. Um, how do you think they were able to somehow carry on? This is a very tricky question. I know. I'm going to get a little metaphysical or spiritual, if you will. Okay. I, I don't believe in, it's awful to say, uh, bear with me. I don't believe in coincidences, you know? Mm -hmm. I think um, we're all put on earth for a certain reason. and. Um, for some reason, all this tragedy and this pain befell this amazing family. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was an accident that happened to them because they were somehow able to deal with it. They are just such inspirational, strong, courageous people in the truest, truest sense. Um, I'm, again, very, very blessed to call them my friends now, but just to see them even now do what they do in Matt's name is unbelievable, but it's no surprise to me because they're they're truly special mm -hmm. and so down to earth, um, and they're just amazingly strong. So mm -hmm. I, it's a hard thing to answer, but I just feel like it was no accident that it happened to them, mm -hmm. you know, and they made a choice, a very conscious choice to to f continue to fight for their son and to not you know sulk and hide in the shadows and you know capitalize on this opportunity to make change in his name, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. yes. Um, yes. I have to start off by saying that this is an absolutely powerful film. Mm -hmm. I was so moved. I was honestly tearing up while watching it. Thank you. Um, it was absolutely moving to see how uh, you humanized Matt and reminded us that he was a human and that he was a person with a story behind him. And I guess that sort of humanity made me feel a lot more vulnerable because this could happen to anyone. And that sort of humanization of it kind of reminded everyone watching that this could happen to anyone and that people are vulnerable to this sort of hatred. My question is, how would you, uh, if you had any method of recommending us to fight this sort of hatred, to take a stance today, what can we do? It's a great question, thank you. Um, so many different types of things. Um, you know, being educated upon, about all these types of issues, the inequalities and mm -hmm. things, that, those are all amazing things. Voting, um, donating to a lot of amazing organizations, Matthew Shepard Foundation being one. 
I can think of a gazillion, PFLAG, Human Rights Campaign, Trevor Project, I'm mm -hmm. a staunch supporter of all of those. But, you know, it all starts here. So what I like to say is um, it's important not to dismiss the concept of just simple kindness. You know, it's very important to just be compassionate and kind to the people around you. And it sounds very trite, you know, and very simple, but it, it, it isn't really. We're not, we don't, you know, we're not, no man is an island, I think is a colloquialism. Yes. It yeah. takes all of us, we're all in this together. And when you are kind to someone and someone witnesses that and experiences that, they're likely to give that kindness forward. So it's, it kind of grows and we become a more compassionate society, one person at a time. So that's a very, um, very simple action step that I like to talk about. I would like to piggyback on that question because it might seem overwhelming to any of you who, obviously Michelle had a story to tell. She wanted to tell a story, which is a film. And in, uh, you told me, because I read that in 2011, with a goal of $50,000, but you said it was actually earlier, 2009-ish. Yeah. Your goal was $50,000 to make a film. The funding days, she had a 44-day window to raise um, $50,000, and you had 669 backers mm -hmm. who pledged to help you make this film. Mm -hmm. So that was a Kickstarter campaign, and so you don't have to actually um, go to a studio. I, I wondered how you decided to make this film through crowdsourcing and sure. and what were your choices about uh, financing? And how um, much did the film cost ultimately sure. from start to finish? I think from start to finish and we're still racking up stuff, mm -hmm. you know, it was right. about around 200,000 or so, which in the realm of purely independent, down and dirty, you know, documentary cinema is very, very, very small. Um, mm -hmm. But for normal human beings, it's a tremendous amount of money. So to be honest, we were very, I was very protective of Matt's story and mm -hmm. the film and how we were going to tell his story. Um, we were very adamant that it had to be in this way, mm -hmm. you know? Um, without going too far into it, it, we just were very, protective of what we wanted to put on screen and how we wanted it to be very honest, um, but still very sensitive to the amount we knew. So we didn't want to just take money from anyone or anywhere. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. back in 2009, 2010, there was this kind of new thing called Kickstarter, which is now, you know, kind of an inevitability, yes, you yes, know? Yes. Um, we found out about Kickstarter and just, I think a light bulb went off in my head. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was such a beautiful concept to have a film like ours be collectively funded from like-minded people all over the world. It was just, I don't know, it just felt right. Mm. And I was crazy to think that we could do it, but I did. And luckily we were very, very successful. But I really like talking about it because it's one of the things that I'm most proud of about the film. Um, you know, we're talking about kindness. There's a thousand people around the world who gave to our film um, just because they felt so compelled mm -hmm. to have Matt's story there on screen. Um, and I was so moved. And, you know, I spent so much of my adolescence in my early 20s with such a cynical view of the world. I was so devastated by what happened to Matt and how cruel the world could be. And it, it changed me and it mm. marked me very deeply. So I was, um, I s tended to see the bad in a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But after this, making this film and, and seeing so many people open up their hearts and their wallets mm -hmm. to help me, I mean, it just showed me that I was wrong and that, ugh, you know, there is a lot of good out there in the world. Right. And there are a lot of good people and, they're, and they want to make a difference. And, you know, this film is, is proof of it. Yes. Yes. My final question to you, first of all, I, I do want to say again, um, I think this is a beautifully made film. And I hope that everyone gets a chance to see it. I feel that I'm very lucky that my colleague Natalie Fawcett brought it to our attention. Um, 
I think it's very, very important that we brought it here, and I'm so grateful that we got to support you at this early stage in your career. <laughs> I expect that based on how well you did this film, you're going to have a wonderful career. I'm very, very supportive of you, yeah, and I hope that you, kind of you bring all of your future work back to the Pollock Theater yeah. and Carsey Wolf Center. We're, we're very, you. very supportive of you. I'm very, very grateful. It's just such a tremendous opportunity to be here with all of you to share something you know, very personal to me, and I hope it becomes personal to all of you. Um, I don't take this film lightly at all. You know, I'm always so very, very grateful to each and one, each and every one of you in the audience because um, it's not an easy thing that you just did sit <laughs> through 89 minutes of a really heart-wrenching story, but um, you know, it's all. What, what would you like in a, your final comments? I know you learned a lot mm -hmm. making this film, that you are a changed person from when you started it until right now. What would you like everyone in this room to take away from your film? Um, that's a very heavy question. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I always point to the title of the film as a mission statement. I hope that all of you can take a little bit of Matt's, remember that Matt is a human being and beyond that kind of realize the impact all of you have on the lives of others. Um, and I hope the film and Matt's story and the work that Judy and Dennis do in Matt's name inspire you in whatever way to live an authentic life um, with compassion and understanding and acceptance um, and courage. That's a great way to end our conversation. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Thank you, guys.